Good morning, everybody. It's Kathy Haig here at the Magical Urban Vegetable Garden. I hope you have your coffee ready, and today you might even want to grab pen and paper because there's uh, going to be lots of uh, ideas and information coming at you, and uh, you're going to want to do some research after uh, on this, um, and, and I'll explain why in a minute here. Um, today's topic is about attracting beneficial insects to your garden and it's a huge topic. I mean there's people I'm sure that go to university and get degrees in these things um, these days but uh, understanding a little bit about your garden and uh, what you can attract and, and who does what you know what insects do what job um, is something that's really important if you're trying to create an organic and balanced little ecosystem wherever it is that you garden. Now, what you attract is going to be unique to um, your area. You want to know, you know, just because I have a certain type of insect here doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have that a type there or that, um, you know, it might be a different, a different version. A, a, you know, there's, um, for example, parasitic wasps. There's hundreds of different types, um, but it depends on where you live. Hey, Chris, how are you? Um, so grab pen and paper and uh, you know let's get started on this. Now I got I got a whole list of notes here that I, I'm going to go through um, and of course you can go back after and watch this um, but I think probably let's start with um, you know what are beneficial insects and they fall it fall into two categories for me two two main categories. Um, there's beneficial predators basically for every pest out there there's usually at least um, y y there's usually uh, something that preys on it that helps keep it under control. Not always. I still haven't found uh, anything for tent caterpillars yet. Birds won't even eat them here. So if you found something that works on tent caterpillars, let me know because it's a it's a yearly thing every spring. But for the most part, everything that you have in your garden, um, if there's a pest, it's um, knowing uh, what the balance is and what it is that feeds on that. So. Um, the other one is pollinators, and you know, attracting um, uh, natu uh, your local pollinators. And we always think of honeybees, um, but there's so many different types, and very often they overlap. As oh, I've got a little bumblebee buzzing around on my tomato plant here. He's going to land on my phone here, maybe not. Um, anyways, so let's start off with you know the general term on beneficial insects and and what they are, and usually. It um, means an insect that's a predator to another type of insect. And so it helps keep your plants and garden space healthy and in balance. Now, some of the most common beneficial uh, predators that we hear about are things like ladybugs, praying mantises, um, hoverflies, ground beetles, lacewings, soldier beetles, parasitic wasps, and there's so many more. So when you're done here, do a Google search on um, uh, beneficial uh, garden predators, like um, uh, beneficial insects to your garden, and uh, start finding out what's local to your area. And the other thing I'm going to say here, I'm going to I'm going to mention is that um, you know we've had been so inundated for you know decades, even centuries, um, you know, because our great grandparents and great great grandparents, I mean, they had limited knowledge. They were good, probably good farmers and gardeners. But they didn't have access to the knowledge that we have now uh, to be able to research. So if they had a pest problem, I mean, there was limited ways that they knew of how to deal with it, right? And if they d if they couldn't find a solution, um, you know, your crops went to hell in a handbasket for the year, and maybe you starved. Who who knows, right? And we just have a lot more um, access to information. So I'm going to tell you right now, um, you know, get a good couple of good apps on your phone. Um, you know, one to identify plants, your local plants. The best app I've ever gotten is called Picture This. Um, I've actually paid for the pro version because it's just that good. There's very few apps I will ever pay for. I usually just go for the free. Um, but try it out. Decide decide if you want the full version or not. But I take it. I use it everywhere. You know, on hikes with the dog, um, identifying stuff in the garden. The thing is amazing. And they also have an insect one. Get the insect one, so you can start learning about what is happening in your garden and you know what these things do. Because here's an example. So 
beneficial predators. So we see these great big beetles crawling around in our garden and we freak out because, you know, we know that they're probably good, but you know, we don't want them maybe crawling on us. And you know, I get that, I'm, I'm also that way. But finding out what they do in your garden, because there's so many different kinds. You know, some of them break down dead leaves and wood. They're really good guys. Some of them, um, you know, they're pollinators. Now, there is a type of pollinator that, you know, um, maybe they'll kind of chew up your flower in the process of pollinating, but they're still a pollinator. So, you know, understanding that just because something ate part of your flower doesn't necessarily make it, make it a totally bad guy, right? Um, and there's others that are, you know, absolutely voracious eaters of things like aphids. So finding out what's really happening in your garden instead of just pulling out, you know, the bug killer um, is really important if you're trying to create an ecosystem where everything lives in balance, right? Okay, now the other thing is, is attracting your local pollinators. And um, this includes things like your mud wasps and mason bees, uh, butterflies and moths. We all know about butterflies and moths, but there's actually a bunch of others too. You know, there's ants, there's regular wasps, midges and mosquitoes. We don't like those and we don't want too many of them, of course, because they're just not fun to have around. Um, but they are an important part of the ecosystem. They feed your birds and frogs. Um, and, you know, there's also beetles, flies, um, hoverflies are your reigning royalty of, of pollinators as well as your beneficial predators, you know. So there's crossovers on a lot of these. Yeah, they're beneficial predators. They're also really great pollinators. So knowing what you have crawling around in your garden instead of just stomping on it the next time you see it. Don't worry, I've been there. Um, is finding out what it is and, you know, maybe figuring out if it's actually a friend you kind of want to keep around. Um, now, the, the big question, of course, is how to attract them. And with bugs, it's basically having food and housing. Put it there and they will come. It's not like websites. It's not like setting up a business. Um, they may or may not. There's lots of other things you have to do. If you put it out and, you know, it's in a friendly environment, you don't have your neighbors and you know, local authorities spraying for weeds and all the rest of the stuff, you probably, you, you should have them showing up. Um, and I'm going to switch my notes over here because i got lots left for you. Okay. Um, uh, now, plants that are beneficial to, to pollinators and predators um, are often the same thing. And, oh my goodness, where do we even start? Herbs are a great one, like your bee balm, lavender, um, dill, fennel, um, flowers like nasturtiums, uh, pansies, alyssum, uh, wild carrots, mustard greens. You know all those mustard greens you plant and they go to seed? Those are fabulous for attracting um, pollinators and good insects because they have a lot of food value. So, you know, if you want to keep pollinators coming to your, your garden all, you know, summer long, maybe have a little, have a couple little patches of mustard greens that go to seed around the thing. Yeah, you're going to have to be pulling up or transplanting sprouts next year, but you know what? You didn't have to start them. Nature just puts them there, right? Um, and here's the biggest thing, especially with predators. If they run out of food, they're going to keep on moving because most of them are just voracious eaters. They are, um, Oh, if like ladybugs are a prime example. I think ladybugs live like three to four months. And in that period of time, oh, I think the statistics on, on what they eat, um, in that period of time, they can eat be anywhere between three and 5,000 aphids. Like they're voracious. But if you get a bunch of them and they clean out your aphid population, they're going to move on. They need food. Like they're not, they're not going to stick around. So you know, I've had people say, oh, well, I got them and a bunch of them flew off. Yeah, some of them probably are going to fly off. But if you do it right, like when you get, um, you know, and you're, you're wherever it is, you get your ladybugs or your, um, your other um, predators from um, to, to release in your garden, you know, release it when it's cool out. Put them where you're having the problem, like where there's aphids and food for them. So as they start warming up and becoming aware, um, they have food right in front of them, right? 
um, if you just kind of dump them all over, they may or may not see it. They have bug brains. Their bug brains aren't very big, right? So you kind of have to help them along that way. Um, but the thing is, is to keep food happening. If you want to keep a certain amount of food happening, you kind of have to have um, a, a continuing food source. So here's the thing. Um, ants, for example, farm aphids. Now, an overabundance of ants um, can really throw things out of balance. We had that happen one year in our greenhouse. It was like the perfect storm. We went from nearly freezing nights to like 35 degrees in two days. It was humid, it was hot. Ant hills exploded and in 48 hours, the entire greenhouse was infested with, you know, aphids. So we had to get the ant hills under control. We got like, I, I can't even remember, I think it was like 500 ladybugs for a few bucks from the local nursery turned them loose in the greenhouse and they did get everything under control. The peppers never recovered that year, but you know, it did get everything under control and we haven't had the problem since. Now I still have ants in the greenhouse. I have a little tiny ant hill and there's more way over on the other side of the property in the ditch. So it kind of keeps it in balance. But the thing is, is that ants farm aphids. Aphids produce like kind of a sweet, almost honeydew nectar. Hey Claire, good to see you. Um, Ants, ants farm aphids much like we do milk cows for uh, nectar that they produce and they take it back to the hive, they feed their young and the queen. Um, ants are very industrious and provided it's under control, you know, and they haven't taken over your entire garden, they can continue to provide food for things like your um, hoverflies, your ladybugs, your praying mantises, you know, whatever it is that's in there. Um, that needs this food. The thing is, is to keep it under control. Oh, there's my bee. Maybe he'll land on my head here. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but plant around the edge of your garden, plant some sacrificial, plant some sacrificial uh, uh, plants. Um, I found f out from my father-in-law years ago, um, like he, he always planted dill near his door. He said it always has aphids all over it, but he said they leave everything else, else alone. That, my friends, is a prime example of companion planting and attracting beneficial insects and predators, okay? So he plants some dill, usually near the door, anything that's maybe coming in the door of the greenhouse that's inclined to it, they go straight for that dill and they just stick around because there's food. It also attracts some natural predators like ladybugs that kind of help keep them under control. They don't get too, too crazy and at the end of the season, he pulls them out. Another prime example of that is nasturtiums. I have a nasturtium plant by the door. Nasturtiums are, are pretty famous for attracting, you know, problem insects, but they also, because of their blooms, attract um, pollinators and they attract your predatory insects that you need, right? So having these things in balance, you know, maybe you don't want, um, you know, your carrots being taken over by, you know, <laughs> caterpillars, carrot rust fly and all that, you know, plant some wild carrots, you know, out along the edge of your garden, you know, so that they can keep, you know, your insects fed um, and make sure you have pollinators in your garden. I love having calendula around because once it starts to bloom mid-summer, it goes straight through till snowfall. Um, I've had calendula that keeps blooming, you know, when it's at that, it's kind of wet and, you know, it's zero degrees and slushy, maybe minus one or two. Once you get a couple hard frosts, then it dies down, but it reseeds and grows back in the spring. But it will keep your pollinators fed right up till snowfall and when they go into hibernation or whatever it is that, you know, you, that particular type of insect does. So um, there's easy ways to attract these. Now, some of other things that you can do is um, set up a bug hotel. These things are huge. Take a look on Amazon. You know, maybe you want to build one yourself, but there's bug hotels that you can actually put up that give them protection, you know, from birds. Um, yes, we want birds around, but you know, birds get hungry and you know, they're indiscriminate, most of them, in what they eat. Um, toss some seeds around your garden. I've brought this up before with companion planting. Alyssa's a great one for just fast uh, and quick growing and being very hardy. Sprinkle it up and down your, your walks, uh, the walk, the pathways in your garden um, because it helps mulch, you know, it helps um, suppress weed growth. 
It provides shelter for insects, but also beneficial beetles and, you know, little frogs and, you know, things that you want in your garden, right? Um, they're easy enough to pull up if they're really in a place that's just not, you can transplant them. They're hardy, they're drought tolerant, you know, there's just all kinds of things to do with it. Um, but let's see, pansies, I've had people, the little pansies, the little Johnny jump ups, I've had people tell me, oh, they're really invasive. And I'm like, well, they do spread. They will go to seed, but they're easy to pull up. Like they just, you know, and if you just have way too many, make sure you get a bunch of them up before they go to seed. Throw them in your compost pile. They're, they're great. They're edible, you know, like there's so many ways of easily attracting all these insects that you want. And for God's sake, don't just go pulling out your, your chemicals, you know, the first time you see a bug, because that stuff lasts in your soil and goes into your water systems for years, sometimes decades, and it affects everything that it touches. Okay. Um, <coughs> the, the thing is, is to, um, you know, do a little research when you get off here, um, do some research for your area. And the big thing too that I found is that even I, you know, I mean, it's always a learning thing, you know, um, until I did some research, I didn't realize, you know, we think of hoverflies and, and, uh, you know, beneficial wasps and stuff. Um, most of them are completely harmless. They don't sting. Um, but if you see them, you're going to think it's like a yellow jacket or, you know, just a regular fly. Same thing with mason bees. The mason bees we have around here, you'd almost think they were flies when you see them going past, like you wouldn't know. So we need to learn to be able to identify and pay attention to what's going on so that we can, you know, not be harming the things that are actually helping us out. So <coughs> let me know what you find out about um, your garden and the insects that are there. Leave a comment below. And um, let's grow some greener and better gardens that kind of just take care of everything out there and in balance. Love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.